Every soul, every beating heart, every nation and every tongue, come find hope in the love of the Father. All creation will bow as one, lift their eyes, see the risen sun, Jesus, Jesus Savior forever and ever. May God be with you. Hey, good morning to you, whether you're here in church or you are online um, today. Glad you're here at Mount Olivet Lutheran Church of Plymouth. Uh, you will see that you are adorned today uh, with 98 quilts among the sanctuary um, created and sewn and put together uh, by our quilting group, and uh, they don't stay here for us. Um, they move about from this place to other places, and we'll do a special blessing to our prayer time, and um, I think Pastor Christian would be okay if he needed to lie down and snuggle up during the sermon <laughs> today with those, um, but just looking out um, to see all the color and the beauty around us is really a gift. And in the church year, we call this Christ the King Sunday. It's actually the last Sunday of the church year. Advent is the beginning. And uh, what we name today is um, God's love is more powerful in, than anything else in the world, um, but does not overtake or um, oppress, but comes as a real servant love. And so um, your ears may perk up 
as you hear from the Gospel of Luke and as Pastor Kristen um, preaches on the crucifixion of Jesus today, that that king is found on the cross. And so for all those ways, and then um, we're just grateful over this last fall, the last 12 weeks, we have intentionally tried to connect and be known, to get to know each other. So whether you've been new to Mount Olivet or here for a long time, everyone started on a level playing field. And that is, hey, introducing yourself. My name is Beth, and I'm really interested in hearing a little bit more about who you are. And so um, we'll have two questions today after the sermon, all about what has it been for you this fall? How have these connections gone and what has surprised you? And just really giving thanks for this opportunity to be able to connect in community in a new way. So with all of that, I ask you to stand as you are able as we begin our welcome. Dear community in Christ, this is the place. This is the place for connection and growth, for community and hope. All belong here. All are welcome here. All hurt and joy, needs and prayers, dreams and love are welcome here. Spirit of life, gather us together as the body of Christ. Amen. Together, let us acknowledge our failure to love and care for one another as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us again in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey through Jesus Christ, whose saving grace is for all. Amen. Hear and believe the good news of the gospel. Every day is a new day. We are claimed. We are forgiven. We are invited into relationship with God and one another. Thanks be to God for a grace that knows no end. Amen. Reaches 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also with you. Let's pray together. Jesus, you came not to rule over us as a king, but to serve us and show us the way of love and forgiveness. Let us glimpse your mercies among the hardness of life and live as if you reign is here and now. Amen. Good morning. Today's gospel is from Luke chapter 23. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing and the leaders stood by watching. As the people stood by watching, but the leader scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his choice, chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there, kept deriding him and saying, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him saying, do you not fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been justly condemned for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, truly, I tell you, today you be, will be with me in paradise. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Good morning. His name was Kino. He was my grandpa, and I loved him. He was a towering man with a twinkle in his eye, especially when his family was around. What a family, he would bellow out when we gathered at the table for a meal. I got to see my grandpa a lot when I was growing up, and I loved the Sunday mornings when I was allowed to skip Catholic Mass and surprise him at his church. I would sneak into his pew, snuggle up to him in his gray pinstriped wool suit, and feel like the most important person in the world. If I had to describe him in just a few words, they would be joyful, faithful, and content. He had only a little money to his name, but to know him, you would think he was living like the life of a king. What delight he took in drilling tiny little holes in his sneakers so he wouldn't have to spend money on sandals. What satisfaction it gave him to create a do-it-yourself humidifier by hanging a damp towel on the shower bar and positioning his fan just right. What pride he had in sharing what he was cooking in the kitchen each week. Speaking of hot dogs from Pastor Beth's sermon last week, my grandpa's favorite meal in his later years was to heat up chopped hot dogs in canned soup. We were horrified, but he went on and on about his concoction like it was a bisque fit for a king. My grandpa lived his life knowing the real king, and so everything else was simply gravy. 
As Pastor Beth said, today is Christ the King Sunday, a day to pause and proclaim that Christ reigns over the whole world before we pivot back into the mysteries of Advent. And I have to say up front that Christ as King is not a metaphor that works for everyone. It would have worked for my grandpa, for sure, but it might seem outdated and in a world where violence and nationalism and oppression and disregard for creation seems to reign, likening Jesus to anything kingly might even feel offensive to to some of us. Of course, that's what all the smearing was about that day that Jesus was stripped down and hung on the cross between two criminals. How could he be king of the Jews when he could do nothing to save even himself? And so therein lies the paradox of our faith, that in a world so in love with power and domination, we worship a king who was literally a dead man walking and who at the very same time was forgiving his perpetrators and speaking a blessing of promise and paradise to a thief at his side. That Jesus was king made no sense. So I have a very basic question for you to think about today on Christ the King Sunday, and that is this. Why are you here? Either in person or online, why are you here? I'm guessing that you didn't come today to worship a king who rules from a throne. You're not here because it's going to have a positive impact on your 401k. I'm guessing that you're not here for a performance either. Talented musicians and staff, though we surely have. You're not even here primarily because we partner with community organizations because there are countless ways you could volunteer without church. And finally, after the pandemic that turned the world upside down, you are not here just because you are a creature of habit. There's been enough disruption that you could have faded into the woodwork if you wanted to. So let me go out on a limb and speculate that you are here on this Sunday because at some time in your life, even if just for a moment or two. You got a glimpse of the Jesus on the cross that we read about today, and your life has never been the same. Maybe someone carried your burdens for you, or someone forgave you when it made no sense whatsoever, and you wondered, what in the world is this love all about? Maybe you found yourself helping someone out of the good of your own heart, expecting nothing in return, and knew that you too were connected to the same source of love as Jesus. Maybe you looked into the eyes of a loved one who was dying and knew in your body that eternal life The thing Jesus called paradise, in some way, shape, or form, was indeed real. Maybe you have intuition in your bones that the power of love and hope and reconciliation is much stronger than the power of violence, division, and hate. So if I had to guess, I would say that you are here because you have felt this radical love of Christ moving in and through and alongside you in this life some way. And I believe this is true because otherwise our being together, all of us, this cold November morning would make no sense. 
My friends, these encounters with God, call them holy moments or thin spaces with loved ones and neighbors and strangers, these laid out and stitched together over space and time and geography and eternity, these moments are the reign of Christ. They make no sense in the world we live in, just like Jesus on a cross made no sense as king. Proclaiming Christ's kingship over the world, as we are told to do this Sunday, might not feel authentic for everyone. But what would it be like if we simply began to own our own holy moments just a bit more? What would it be like if we had the courage to tell our own stories of God coming near and share them with others? What would the world be like if we lived more confidence from day to day that the way we have already experienced God is indeed real in the here and now and in the promises to, be, to come? We had to move Grandpa Kino to the nursing home in his last few days. I have to admit, it was pretty depressing. Settled in a dingy shared room, his roommate on the other side of the curtain was cursing sporadically, and his attempts to press the button uh, for nursing help often went unanswered. But he seemed to take it all in stride with kind and gentle eyes, even when my aunt and I struggled to help him on and off his commode, this weird chamber pot-like thing in the middle of the room, which must have been pretty humiliating. When it was time for me to say goodbye for the last time, I remember him grabbing my hand so hard, raising his head up from his pillow to say, I love you so much. We both knew we wouldn't see each other again, at least on this side of life, but he might have well have said, I'll see you in paradise. Because in his eyes, I saw the fullness of heaven and earth come into view. So the reign of Christ to me will never be Jesus up on a throne, ruling down upon us, but forever Jesus sitting alongside us in our weakest moments, even on the commode. And I know that to be real and true. What about you? What do you know to be real and true about the love of Christ? God, give us all the courage to proclaim what we already know about you and to live our lives knowing that it's true. Amen. Please stand as we sing together. We're going to put together two hymns that are beautiful and that really speak to the scripture in Pastor Kristen's sermon today. Jesus, remember me, the words of that criminal, and then beautiful Savior. Jesus, remember me. 
Remember me. As I've mentioned, in lieu of sharing the peace this fall, um, our peace has been shared as we get to know each other um, a little bit more. And so today, a couple questions for you to ponder. Um, the first one is, um, how have you connected this fall? Uh, what difference has it made to have some time in worship to get to know people around you? And then what surprised you about your conversations? I have to tell you, um, I have heard so many powerful little stories of people who have met someone they didn't know or have found that they have come from the same town or uh, know someone similar or have an affinity to something because we've taken this time. So here, here's how it works. If you are online, Beth McGrew King uh, will connect with you in the questions online uh, to be able to share. If you're here at church, you have two ways of doing this. You can move and find someone that you don't know very well and connect with them. And if you want to stay where you are at, someone will come and find you. And so for the next few minutes, about five minutes, uh, make sure you introduce yourself if you don't know each other and have a chance to connect. So here we go.
Welcome back. Um, we now continue with our offering. Um, just for all the things that this fall has held, we're so deeply grateful. Um, just have to say, uh, we couldn't do any of this uh, without your financial gifts to Mount Olivet um, to advance our vision and our mission here, and also just the daily things like worship and uh, these beautiful quilts and how our kids and uh, adults continue uh, to be nurtured in their faith. So there'll be a basket up front you can put your offering. Um, there's a QR code to give online and also a box uh, behind us for our offering as well. So that's where we continue.
We now pray over our offerings. God of abundance, accept the gifts we give this morning. Accept our voices raised in song and prayer. Accept our gifts of time and talent to further your peace and justice. Accept our gifts of money, for all that we have comes from you. remembrance of me again after supper he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this for the remembrance of me the Holy Spirit gathers us together and we pray the prayer Jesus taught us our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. There is a place for you here um, at God's table. Uh, God's vision is for all the world to be fed, and it doesn't come stored up in lofty places, but is daily. And it's the Apostle Paul that says in this meal, every time we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so in our way, for all the world that tells us that God's love does not reign, this meal is one that speaks to that. And it's by us opening our hands to receive this grace that keeps on coming. And then God who chooses us as humans to share and witness to that story in the world. So do that today. We do that today. If you're online, hear these words, the body of Christ is given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. The wafer here at church is gluten-free, wine is wet, red, and grape juice is clear. You can pray where you are after you receive the meal or come up front here as well. Please come forward. This feast of love is ready. Good 
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. And so now we pray. And um, it's all our prayers together. And these are the places and the people where we are calling God to show up in love. And when we pray like that, we're calling God to show up and we're also calling, God is calling each of us to show up. So it's kind of a mix. Um, but we trust um, that God's love is that close, uh, that we can speak the places where we need it, and God is working in and through all things for that to be revealed. Um, and on this side of heaven, sometimes it takes longer than we think, or it doesn't come about in the ways um, that we hope for, and yet God is still there. And so um, I'll start us off. If you're here at church, just raise your hand, name your prayer. And then uh, for those online, please type your prayers in and we will pray as well. So let's pray. Uh, good and gracious God, uh, today um, at the end of the church year, to hear again the story of the crucifixion that even in death, in the place of an ending, Jesus speaks of life and forgiveness, that you were working even there to create uh, this hope and resurrection, that there is nothing, nothing, nothing that can separate us from our love. And yet we work so hard to build walls and create barriers and put our arm out and say no, and yet that love continues to come to each of us. Um, it is the dailiness of dying and rising each and every day. And so for how you raise us in the living 
in this world to hear again and to be changed. Uh, we're so grateful. Hear now the prayers of your people, God, in your mercy. What prayers do you have today? Yeah, Linda. You got it. Um, grateful uh, for your view today and all those prayers, Linda, that your surgery went well, um, uh, to be able to see and be here. And thank goodness Percy's doing better. Uh, Jammu and Bjorn um, and Annika continue to pray uh, for your pet, um, your family, um, two legs and four, and um, to be able to notice things like that and speak those in prayer. God, in your mercy. Yeah, tricky. Mm. So prayers for the Acres family um, on uh, an unexpected tragic death. Was it of Terry? Um, God, um, how fragile this life is. Um, and for life to change so quickly um, and so devastatingly. And so for Terry's life and love and faith in this world and now in heaven, and for his dear family as they make their way to figure out life so differently, and for this prayer to land on all of us, because I have a sense uh, we all in some way have experienced or will experience um, this promise um, that there is nothing that can separate us from love, but it sure changes everything. And so for a real tangible love to be shown to Terry's family right now as they grieve and make their way. Uh, God, we pray for this all-encompassing embrace of love in this world, specifically for Terry and his family. God, in your mercy. Yeah, Don. God, prayers for the people of Ukraine. Um, how do you speak a story that seems to never end in terms of oppression and war, um, death, disruption, collapse, devastation, um, and yet there is a heartbeat of life uh, for people in this world, leaders especially, to stand up to oppressive power, uh, for the dailiness of daily bread and the breath of your spirit to come to people of Ukraine, God, in your mercy. We're mindful of waking up to the news of shooting in Colorado Springs, especially targeted on the LGBTQ community. God, for a hate that's so real and for some perception that a certain way to be is the only way, what a scarce way to live. Uh, for your love to transcend, uh, for our deep grief, uh, for us to be able to hear and see anew, God, your love for all people, each and every one of us as we are. Be compassionate in our listening. Um, God, change the world. God, in your mercy. I have a couple other prayers to add before online. Um, Mindy, you're here. Um, just really grateful. Mindy Potvin has been tending our front gardens and our pots. And um, it may go unnoticed, but I think it's noticed. Uh, she has a green thumb and a really big heart, and she's been doing it for seven years, which, Mindy, is like creational time. So now it's time for you to rest. Um, but she's moving on to other things. And Mindy, I just want to say, just deeply grateful for your call so specifically. She just gets after it. Um, and it's just, um, it's inspiring. So thank you for growing things and pruning things and tending things and showing up. Um, I hope we are as good as saying thank you as we are to inviting people and calling people. So for Mindy today, God in your mercy. Oh, thank you, Joan. Yes. And growing things and mending and putting things together, um, if you wouldn't mind just putting your hand on one of those quilts, uh, 98 of them are around here by our quilting group. 
Um, but they're not for keeps. Uh, they're to be freely given away to people who just need a tangible sign of hope and love. Lutheran Social Services, PRISM, who is our food shelf um, here in the West Metro, uh, Home Free, uh, the Women and Children's Shelter for people experiencing domestic abuse, and for Beacon and those families who are unhoused right now. Um, they don't get something used, they get something new that was created for them and for all the prayers and stitches of hope that these quilts, um, these quilts remind us um, tangible ways of putting things that aren't supposed to be together, together, and then being wrapped in love. So um, God, send these quilts to people um, to remind them of that deep sense of love, God in your mercy. And dear friends online, I'm coming to you right now with your prayers. Uh, let's see what you have, if there's any here. And God, as we enter this Thanksgiving week, uh, for all the travel, um, for the coming and going, uh, we started the month being so thankful for the saints among us and remembering and love all those people who have died. And we end this month with a full heart and gratitude for all the ways that God continues to come. And um, may that be contagious in how we live. Um, we have been blessed, and so we bless. Into your hands, O oh God, uh, for all these things we have spoken and named and prayed for today, we believe in faith that you will come close. Amen. Just a few announcements uh, today. Um, since I've been here, I've been just blown away by the generosity of this uh, community, and we have another way for you to participate in generosity over the holiday season. Um, Christmas giving has been, for our partners, has been a tradition here. You will notice three uh, Christmas trees out in the Welcome Center. One is for um, kids and teens, uh, toys and gifts uh, via PRISM, one is for pajamas and slippers for women recovering from uh, domestic violence uh, via Home Free. And then there's another tree for gift cards for other families in need um, from Parenting with Purpose and also Trinity Lutheran. So I just, if you feel invited, please um, go to the tree. There's an ornament, everything you need. We're trying to make it really easy Everything you need to know about how to give uh, for that particular family is on the ornament. So that should be easy for you. Any questions, um, ask me. Um, we want you to have a wonderful uh, Thanksgiving this next week. We'll see you back here uh, next Sunday for worship at 9 and 1045. Uh, where we will begin traveling down the road of Advent um, and uh, immersing ourselves in the mysteries of Advent. Everything you need uh, for that experience is on the e-alert. You can see uh, co several concerts as well as uh, an Advent examine um, opportunity as well. So with that, um, I will, well, please rise as you are able and uh, receive this blessing. May God grant you the courage to speak truth, the wisdom to listen, the strength to ask for help, and the resiliency to choose love. Go in peace with Christ beside you. Amen. Oh, 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 oh.
sound so innocent All full of good intent Swear you know best But you'll expect me to Jump on on board with you And run off into your delusional sunset I'm not the one who's lost No direction of what you'll never see You're so busy making maps With your name on them in all caps Just her.